I have put in place a zero tolerance policy for illegal entry uh, on our southwest border. If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. It's that simple. If you smuggle illegal aliens across our border, then we will prosecute you. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law. If you may... children remain separated from their families as a result of the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy at the southern border. About two thirds of the parents are believed to have already been deported after they were split up from their families before the U.S. suspended forced separations. Salvador. I was sad, so 
He let me pick out one toy to take with me. I chose my favorite doll, the one with the blonde hair and blue eyes. I wasn't scared because I always listen to Poppy. He always takes very good care of me. The day we left home? I left Nicaragua with my mom and my two little brothers in the middle of the night. We rode in a van that stopped to pick up strangers in the dark. Everyone looked tired and frightened and no one ever said a word. We were the only kids and my mom kept my brothers as close to her as she could. She was scared when men would get into the van with us. Some were old and some were young. One of the men had a big bushy mustache and looked like my Tio Miguel. He gave me a piece of gum and laughed at my jokes, but everyone else just ignored me. The day we left home, I thought my mom was walking me to school, but when we didn't turn on the street where my school is, I asked her where we were going. She told me to be quiet and to keep looking down. She said that the bad men were looking for us and that if they found us, they would hurt us. She said that we were going to live with Buffy and that I had to keep quiet so that nobody would find us on the way. I was so happy. The last time I saw him was three years ago and now I only talk to him on the phone when he calls. He lives in a place called Norte Carolina. He says that the kids there go to school every day and get to read lots of books whenever they want. I hated the long car rides, but I hated walking even more. Sometimes we would only walk at night and sleep in the daytime in houses that were filled with people that smelled. Sometimes the other kids would get so hungry that they started to cry and people would yell at them. But not me. I never cried. Some of the people we met were nice and there were lots of kids with their moms and they would sing them songs and tell them stories. One of the boys kept staring at me and asked me where I was from. His name was Juan and he was from a place called Chiapas. He was traveling with his aunt and cousins. He talked kind of funny, but we got along and played games. He said that he liked me and that he wanted to be my friend. He even held my hand, but my mom got mad at him. So he stopped doing it. He left with his group the next day. Poppy always kept me very close to him. He never spoke to the other people and told me we could never trust strangers. Cuídate bien, mijita. He would always tell me. I don't know how long the journey was. Days, weeks, it felt like forever. We rode in trains and cars and vans and floated across rivers and walked in the night. Some days we were thirsty, but didn't have enough water. Other days we were bit all over by mosquitoes and bugs. It was awful. My belly hurt because I was so hungry and my brother Diego's legs were always tired. But the man in charge told us that we had to keep going or we would die. I cried so much because I thought I was dying. I would cry out, Mama, I feel like I'm dying. I know I'm dying. But we never stopped. We just kept walking. I was brave. I never cried, and I never complained. The sun was hot, and we were thirsty. 
People were running out of water and fighting with each other and nobody wanted to share. Then I started to throw up, but nothing came out. I was so sick and people took turns carrying me. I don't remember anything after that. The last night I saw Bobby was when we were running across the desert. There were only a few of us in the group because La Miguel was trying to catch us. We ran and I fell twice. I still remember the taste of the dirt in my mouth. Then trucks with big lights surrounded us and everyone started to run in different directions. Poppy picked me up and ran as fast as he could, but he wasn't fast enough. They caught everyone and made a stand in the cold night air a long time. I was so tired. Poppy just held my hand and kept telling me that we would be all right. No te preocupes, mijita. Tu papi está contigo. I was asleep in one of the houses where we stopped to rest when La Migra found us. They tried to wake me up, but I was so tired that I didn't want to open my eyes. Then I heard my mom screaming, and it woke me up like a gunshot. And they were tying her hands and putting her into a car. And she kept yelling at me to take care of my brothers. Then they started pulling us apart and he started crying. I knew they were going to take him from me. So I hugged him tight and told him to get him. The man grabbed me and pulled me hard, but I didn't let go. Papi just kissed me on the cheek and told me not to be scared, that he would find me. They pulled us apart and started taking us to different cars. He was crying and I was screaming, Papi! Papi. They put us in separate vans from the parents. There was so much noise and all the kids were crying. Some even smelled like they peed themselves. I sat between my brothers and hugged them until they fell asleep. I didn't know what was happening or where we were going. It was a long ride and all I could think about was my mom. Screaming. I don't know when I will see Poppy again. I'm scared that they sent him back to El Salvador without me. Or that they killed him. They took me and Alex and Diego into a big building with bright lights. We saw our mom standing in line with the other moms, but they didn't let us go to her. She looked so tired. Later, they brought us into a room together. She hugged us and told us that no matter what happened, we needed to take care of each other. I promised. The guards gave us water and told us to stand against the wall so they could take our pictures. I smiled and my mom smiled, but I could see the fear in her eyes. Then one of the guards came in and started to take her away. She fell to the ground and started screaming, Me But I just stood there. 
I froze. I should have protected my mom. Three days later, they moved me to another building. I haven't seen my brothers again.
There is troubling new information tonight about hundreds of migrant children who were separated from their parents at the southern border by the Trump administration. More than two years after a federal judge ordered families to be reunited, hundreds of children and parents are unaccounted for. Trump administration's zero tolerance policy on immigration is intensifying, with lawmakers in both parties condemning it as cruel and inhumane. The administration still defends the strategy. Like when? Like yesterday. 
people with video cameras came to look at this place. The guards didn't let them inside with us, but they walked around and were whispering and pointing. I didn't even understand a word they said. And sometimes they bring new kids in here and put them into different rooms. I wish we could meet them. The older kids locked in the other room make a lot of noise and sing and dance and laugh at each other's jokes. But they get yelled at for being too loud. I wish we could play with them. One time, I saw one of the other girls crying when she walked out of the bathroom. Then one of the guards, the tall and mean one, came out of the same bathroom and told her to stop crying. She looked so scared. When I asked her why she was upset, all she said was, Don't ever go into the bathroom alone. I remember my mom told me that some people do bad things to little girls. They do them to little boys, too. No, they don't. Yes, they do. But boys can fight and take care of themselves. No, they can't. Trust me. Not in here. What happened? Did you see something bad? I don't want to talk about it! That's okay. You don't have to. There's a lot of things we'll never want to talk about. Well, documents from the Department of Health and Human Services show thousands of migrant children were sexually abused while in U.S. government custody. The documents were released by Florida Congressman Ted Deutsch Tuesday. They show the Office of Refugee Resettlement received more than 4,500 complaints. That's over the past four years. The allegations date back to 2015 during the Obama administration. But they spiked after the Trump administration implemented its zero-tolerance policy at the border. Which joins me now from Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sanas hoy, sanarás mañana. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sanas hoy, sanarás mañana. Sana, sana, colita de rana. Si no sanas hoy, sanarás mañana. Maybe. 
year. Next year, five years. Will I still wake up at night screaming, haunted by the nightmare of my memories, feeling small, strangled, suffocated in my sleep, imagining that I'm still trapped inside this cage? And then the year after that, will a social worker open a case to see why I get into so many fights at school? Will they play my mom and try to take me from her again? And then the year after that, will teachers tell my mom I can't concentrate in my classes, that I'm not learning the way other kids are learning, and that I will need to repeat a grade? Will the doctor tell Poppy I need medicine to fix whatever is happening inside my brain? Will he tell me we can't afford it, but that I need to pray so that the memories of this place will leave me forever? Will I still hold resentment towards my mom for letting me stay in here so long? Maybe. Will I secretly think that she's never coming back every time she walks out that door to go to work? Maybe. How long will I carry the scars and trauma from all of this? Will I ever be able to escape the fear, the anger, and the confusion Will I ever trust anyone again? At the border. And this morning, there's a new government report that says thousands more children, children were possibly separated from their parents by immigration authorities than were previously thought. The report saying the total number is, quote, unknown because of poor communication between federal agencies. Our chief national No, you don't. Uh-huh. Sometimes. I don't have to do homework or clean the house. I like that. Yeah. I don't have to brush my teeth anymore. And I don't have to take a shower if I don't want to. Yeah. No more showers. No more showers. No more showers. No more! showers and I miss combing my hair. Everybody at school used to say I had the prettiest hair. Oh, nobody here cares about any of that. Remember when the older girls were asking for soap and the lady guard told them that they didn't have any? Yeah, who cares about soap anyway? That's a dumb thing to want. If I could ask for anything Ooh, I'd ask for a pillow. I would ask for a bed. I'm tired of sleeping on this floor. I would ask for them to turn off the lights at night. I can't sleep right with them on. At least with the lights on, we know there aren't any monsters in here.
Papi told me that when I get scared, I should pray. If we pray together, maybe someone out there will hear us. Do you really think so? Yes, I do. Okay, let's pray. Like in church? Ah, oh, church is so boring. Do I really have to pray? Yes, it'll make her feel better. But I don't want to. Just do it. No. Please. Come on. Maybe it'll work. And then you can see your mom and brothers again. Okay, fine. Let's do it, but not too long. Okay, ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. Now, let's pray to La Virgencita. She's a mom. She'll help us. She has to. Dios te salve, Maria. Llena eres de gracia. El Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres. Y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros, pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. I hope you're still alive. Good night, Mama. Please don't be mad at me for losing my brothers. Good night, Mama. Wherever you are, you can come and get me now. I'm ready. responsible for creating this problem. We've inherited it, but we're actually the first administration stepping up and trying to fix it. We do not have the luxury of pretending that all individuals coming to this country as a family unit are in fact a family. This administration has a simple message. If you cross the border illegally, we will prosecute Those you. Lawyers and volunteers have been unable to find the parents of 545, according to a court filing. It was like a stadium with both cages inside, and that's where they kept all the people. And when we walked in there, we just saw people just like crying. We saw little kids crying. They put me in a cage. I didn't really know what to think. I was like, is this prison or like, what is this? I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. 